same story, different year. Yeah, Tyson had a similar injury. With that being said, last year, it ended up actually being a good thing. Uh, the benefit this time is it's not as severe, uh, and we know the protocol, like, the back of our hand with some stringent PT over the next few weeks. And at the end of the day, just like your other foot now, it's brand new and you actually have more mobility uh, and you're able to move better laterally. So I think we'll have, we'll gain the same with this one. So not, not how we wanted it to happen, but it couldn't have happened at a better time. My name is Tyson McGuffin. This is the McGuffin Show. We are back here in Coeur d'Alene. Uh, seems like spring is, is starting to come around, which is uh, which is beautiful since uh, my family and I aren't, aren't big snow people. Don't really go up to the mountain or snowboard or ski or any of that. Um, let's see here. I got Mama and K-Mac. Uh, my, my two day ones here with me. K-Mac, what's going on, buddy? Hey, how you guys doing? Um, and yeah, no snow, Tyson. You guys are in the wrong spot in North Idaho. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta become snowboarders. I don't know. I know. We gotta, we gotta get up on that mountain. Once his career is over and he can, he can risk, risk the the accidental fall. And I'm like smashing, that comes right. with that. And I'm smashing Millers in the lodge, and right. I'm gonna be dangerous on that mountain. Watch out. But we love the retirement snow. hobby. Retirement. Yeah, right. right. We love the snow, like Christmas Eve or Christmas, right? I mean, oh, love I the mean, snow. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But just as far as being outside, and, and yeah, you know. we don't really play in it very often. And we are on five acres, and we don't we don't really use it a whole lot <laughs> anytime it snows. So, um, <laughs> um, so our so our kids really are just kind of you know at home bodies. Yeah. Um, no. No, for sure. And it, it's so funny living here my whole life. I've never had an issue with the snow or whatever. I've always driven with all season tires. I mean, we get quite a bit of snow, but I've always felt like I could get around just fine. And I think this last year and a half since we have been gone so much during the winter, it just like or maybe it's getting older, but it feels like every year, like the snow is less and less attractive. No, it is. It's been a sure. it's been a strange winter. K Max, yeah. you had a you had a birthday over the weekend. I mean, not your not yourself, because we only know that you're right. you're you're getting younger. <laughs> uh, right. It's going the opposite way for me. Yeah. Right, right. But you had uh you had a daughter that that had a birthday, correct? Yeah, my oldest uh, turned 12, so it was going to be hit and miss. I was going to have to to originally fly home Sunday night, and uh, that was her birthday, and just kind of take her out to dinner in Seattle, but I got home a little bit early. We decided to surprise her. We went to the Great Wolf Lodge in the Centralia area, kind of just outside Seattle, and uh, yeah, had a, had a really good time. Love that. Love that. And K-Mac, where you're at there in uh, south of Seattle, you guys don't get a whole lot of snow, correct? No, no. Um, you know, hit and miss probably every other year we get it. And so we're, we're the type where we'll take the kids sledding like once we'll, we'll do our one snow day. That's Sounds it like for us. us. And then we'll wait till next year. <laughs> Keep so, up appearances, you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> we're uh, yeah, P and W people. <laughs> oh my God. For sure. Okay. So, uh, Mesa tournament, uh, let's see here. There's lots of headlines. Case and Campbell, Jack sock, Andre and Gabe had a, had a big run. Uh, Kath and AL dominate once again, uh, even though Megan and Etta are playing very well. And I think the last couple of tournaments have definitely solidified themselves as a top three, top four team. Yep. Um, let's see. Fetty, uh, had a nice little run to the finals and then he met the, uh, surgical doctor come Sunday. As we all know, <laughs> the man shows up and shows out on Sunday. Uh, let's see here. AL and Ben, <clears throat> um, seemed like cruised, uh, in the finals, but had a, had a tough little, had a tough little run against Jack and Kath. Uh, Jack Monroe and Julian had a nice little run as well. Ended up taking out Declan and I. And then, uh, let's see, they ended up losing in three to Matt and James, uh, which is a nice little run for them. J uh, yep. Dylan and J-Dub are back on top. And uh, mixed standings, I believe, K-Mac, if you, if you agree with me, uh, kind of that top three um, mixed uh, pairing is Ben, a ben and AL, uh, James and Anna, and Thomas and Vivian. Seems like they've been kind of uh, riding um, on the podium now for a very long time. I know Viv and uh, Thomas... Had got like five or six bronzes in a row, uh, and then finally uh, broke through, beat uh, James and Anna in in the semis there, and made their first final. But uh, K Mac, do you agree with those top three mixed standings? Yeah, it'd be hard to say anybody else just based on results, right? I mean, they've definitely been the most consistent. I mean, it's funny. I mean, I would say you know a year ago, a year and a half ago, I wouldn't have put Thomas and Viv you know that high, but. Um, they've clearly shown that they're, that they're there. I think 
you and Megan will definitely push for that, for that spot. Um, you know, Riley and Jackie, another really good team, but it'd be hard to say any other team would leapfrog them just, you know, based on the results so far. Yeah. And Riley and Jackie, uh, this last weekend, I don't, I don't know if you watched that match, but, uh, ended up like what, 13, 11 game three. Um, this is not throwing shade at PPA at all, but looks like they had some technical difficulties in game three. And uh, they ended up like live streaming it on their socials uh, to kind of close out the match there in, there in game three. But I think uh, I think Ryan and Jackie had one, maybe two match points, ended up losing 13 11. Okay. I know the last couple of times they played Thomas and Viv, it's gone three. Um, but uh, I think uh, something that Thomas and Viv definitely have going for them is that they both live uh, near each other. I know Thomas is in right. New Braunfels, Texas. Uh, Viv is in Austin. They uh, practice and train a lot together. Um, and uh, Viv is one of the few women that is not afraid to go at the guy, <laughs> as with Georgia Johnson. Um, but, uh, you know, to talk about a girl who's super versatile. I mean, she does a lot of things well. Seems like she's getting more on her serve. She can scrap all day long in transition. Uh, she's got heavy, heavy hands. She likes to lean in the kitchen, really um, um, does a good job of taking a lot of balls out of the air. She can speed out of the air. She, she can lob out of the air. And she can dink uh, like there's no tomorrow across court. So I think... Um, yeah, Viv, uh, Viv in women's and in mix. I would say, you know, she's probably a better player in mix than she is women's. But, um, you know, Viv is a freaking rock. Well, it's kind of crazy. I mean, she, she's really an exception to the rule. There's not many, like, top of the top ladies. And I, I definitely put Viv there. But that really is way more comfortable on the right side. So it's kind of funny. In, in women's, she almost needs that, like, alpha partner. And when she has had, she's had, you know, runs to the finals in women's last year with a bunch of different partners, but it's a little odd that somebody that high of a, of a level is that much better on the, on the right side, but it makes her really kind of a perfect mixed player. I mean, if you're a, a lady trying to improve your mixed game, look no further than watching Vivian David. She does such a good job of balancing out being the setup, but also bringing enough offense at the right times to, you know, to keep the guys honest. So does just about everything well that you need to do uh, to be a great right side player. Yeah, and let's not let's not forget about uh, Tommy Gunn, Thomas Wilson. I'll tell you what, <laughs> hits the living life out of the serve, <clears throat> hits hits the crap out of the third ball, and the guy will do whatever it takes on the left to find a forehand. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is very very difficult to to find his backhand side. Um, and I think just with the creation and him sliding over and how Viv can cover middle off the of speed ups. Um, but, uh, you know, like we see Matt Wright doing that a decent amount, running around, finding a forehand on the left. We're seeing Thomas do that. And, and we're seeing uh, plenty of value and guys kind of taking out the backhand side if they can get around with their feet and uh, simply just dictating with the forehand. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You, you can you can run around. You can leave space available as long as you're dictating, right? As long as you're not giving dead dinks or just pushing the ball around. But if you're spinning it, if you're moving it, you can absolutely leave a little bit of a hole sometimes pretty tough for your opponents to find if you're in control of the point. Yeah. And, and Viv's two hander in the middle is, uh, is definitely, definitely one of the best out there. So I think comes back in a hurry. Beauty. So are, compact. Beauty. are they, I mean, of all the mixed teams on tour, I guess other than Ben and Annalie, are they the longest standing? Like yeah, as I mean, being together? Right. I mean, they, they played together all last year. I mean, Kath and I played those guys, I think, four or five times last year and lost in three every freaking time. Um, did but they, um, Did they play together previous to last year? I, I don't. They, I'm not too sure. Back okay, in 2022. Okay. It feels like they've been together yeah. since uh, Thomas I know, I know, really I mean, uh, came out. Yeah, ben May, and Anna so. Lee. I, I think James the Johnson siblings, you know, the yeah. Johnson siblings have been together for obviously a while being, right. being brother right. and sister. But other right. than that, I think I think it's them. I think you have James and Anna, too, that, that have been together since oh, right. the beginning of last year. Man, I think Anna played with Rye for the first couple months. And then right. and then uh, once her relationship uh, grew a little differently with uh, James, I think she, <laughs> you know, and obviously, so obviously she made, she made a very good move. I mean, Rye's yeah. a great mixed player, but uh, James has come a long ways in, in the last, you know, six right. or eight months. Right. And talk about yeah, Anna's tactical. She waited for James <laughs> to be the guy, right? She <laughs> was like, all right, I think. I think you've got enough firepower now. I think you're ready. You're right. ready. Yeah. Um, Sure. Yeah, and I think uh, something that happened to James this last weekend. I mean, I don't, I don't know all the all the details, but uh, seemed like he hurt his shoulder in that in that mixed match. He was hitting an overhead yeah. and was hitting the overhead at like 120 miles an hour. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. He was holding his shoulder afterwards, and it seemed like after that he just kind of lost power anytime the ball got up. Um, and then later on, um, let's see, they ended up losing to Dylan and J dub, uh, him and Matt did like one and seven and same thing. James had a hard time hitting overheads. And then also to look like uh, on Sunday, he pulled out a, 
both uh, mixed matches. So don't know uh, the length of his injury or what's going on there, but definitely seemed like uh, his shoulder was a little banged up. Hopefully it's a one. Yeah, he was grabbing thing. it almost yeah, after like every shot. It's hard to watch. I've had a bum shoulder for the last couple of years. So you can kind of know the signs. And once he wasn't able to go a hundred percent on, you know, putting the ball away, you see how much that hurts his team, how much right. that just extra little bit of power is so needed in a mixed match. And, you know, credit to him for, for toughening it out and, and trying to finish, you know, Anna got a little more aggressive. I think they even put her on the left for a little bit, but just a tough mountain to climb when, when he's not going, you know, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, okay. So the venue, uh, I thought, uh, plenty of space, obviously yeah. there's, there's not a whole lot, uh, going on out there in Mesa. Um, but, uh, I think there's what 50 something courts, something like that. Wow. Um, and now it, it, it's not called legacy anymore. It's called the Arizona sports complex. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think that venue obviously over JW Marriott definitely suits, um, yeah. just the participation and how many, how many people are signing up for events and stuff like that. Uh, easier to get around, uh, seemed like the uh, foot traffic, uh, for vendors and stuff like that as well. It wasn't as crammed and, and no, I, I always, uh, always enjoy playing at that venue. Mama, what do you think about the Arizona sports complex? Yeah. Uh, here, yeah. It says, uh, 41, 41, outdoor hard 41. Courts. uh, yeah, I think the layout's good. I mean, this time I felt like we spent like the whole time outside. I feel like in the previous tournament, maybe people were kind of in and out of the building. Maybe that's not right, but maybe during practice or whatever. But right. that whole facility is just massive. It's crazy. All the things that they've got going on there. But um, Pro Lounge, yeah. uh, probably one of the best pro oh, lounges we, we have. Uh, I mean, if you could have that facility for a pro lounge every time, I mean, that would be amazing. I mean, big turf, workout area, other sports, you know, other uh, athletes in there training at the same time, but so much room. Craigie and Trent can get their pump in midday, you know, (laughs) right? Trainer's dream, that set up. (laughs) Right. Yeah. People don't realize too, it's nice to like be able to get to wherever you need to be and not be split between a few different areas because you don't know how much time you're going to have. Obviously, in a progressive draw, you have much more time, or at least you you kind of know what you're looking at. Right. But on you know a, a thousand tournament, it's tough. Like you don't know if it's going to be 20 minutes or if it's going to be an hour and a half. So so being able to have like somewhere that's close by that you know you can set up camp and you can go there every time, I think is just integral. Yeah, part important. So. Uh, K Mac, tell us your uh, thoughts on Case and Campbell and that shredded up hat that he has. <laughs> it looks like his, his his dog got into it. Yeah, he was he was already turning heads before we saw that he had some game, right? Just with that uh, beat up. I guess it's he said it's his lucky hat. It's lucky you know? hat, so, you know. It you reminds know, me all of good a mom. Go with what works. Yeah. Superstitious. <laughs> reminds me um, of a mom. But no, I'm watching him play Jack Sock. Um, he'd already had a couple of big wins, so I was curious to see what his game looked like and. You know, really nice two-handed backhand. He gets a lot of natural power on that side. I think that's a stroke that that separates him from a lot of guys. You know, amazing forehand as well. Uh, but I think it's really the two-hander and the movement. Um, looks like he's about 150 pounds soaking wet. Right. And, uh, you know, with pickleball, with singles being so much about movement, the point's getting longer and longer. That's almost like the the newer prototypical build at this point. You know, you can't have any excess body fat. You've got to be like a gazelle out there. I thought he showed some great mental toughness in the match against Jack. Lost game one. Looked like Jack was getting ready to roll, and he really uh, made some adjustments, was able to take that one to three. And he was up pretty big in game three before Jack got hot again. So definitely a name to watch. Uh, only 17 years old, so could be good for a long time. No, for sure. Yeah, definitely speedy. Uh, like the two e off the bounce. Um, and uh, it's funny his little his little backhand volley. How how crisp and technically sound is that thing? It looks clean as could be. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, so, a little, little bit of a cut to it. A little bit of a cut to was, it. You know, even when I thought it was really smart, I watched the whole match. Even when Jack was like pulled off, you know, running around his forehand as he always does, and he was off he kind of avoided the open court volley, right? It's almost like a temptation when you go to Jack. It looks like, okay, he's off the court. Let's go to the forehand side. He's so good with that forehand on the run. He kind of just kind of chipped or cut that that backhand volley back to the backhand side and and wrong-footed Jack quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, no, he looked he looked good. Uh, had a had a big win in three over Dylan Frazier, and then uh, obviously lost in three to uh, Jack. But kudos to my man Kaysen. Mm-hmm. Kaysen, let me buy you a new hat, brother. <laughs> uh, uh, taking a look at uh, Sock. So Sock took me out uh, first round on that on that Thursday. 
Uh, I think uh, something that we can know in which we had just kind of mentioned there was, um, yeah, there was a there was a couple times where it was kind of a longer uh, scrambly point. I was at the net defending. And, uh, yeah, I, I would go to the open court, uh, thinking there was space to, to volley to his forehand and Jack on the run, obviously, um, from that highlight reel that I, that I, that I allowed him to have, if you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, is his forehand on the run, like how much whip, how much paddle head speed, uh, what he can do with his hips. I mean, like the guy can hit a wide variety of forehands. Um, and, um, also, too, I thought uh, just his his ability to like defend at the net, how 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 long and lengthy he is, uh, what he's able to do with his volleys, like when he's when he's on the stretch as well. Um, you know, I mean, out of out of all the tennis players that have come in the scene, I think he's he's definitely there. And uh, not only is he is he there in men's singles, but uh, K Mac, did you watch the mixed match uh, with Kathy? I did. Yeah. I did. It was uh, it was pretty impressive, honestly. No, I mean, he's he's banging thirds, banging fifths. Uh, he, he, and he's actually got like a decent little, uh, two handed backhand roll volley or sorry, a two handed backhand roll dink. Um, but yeah, I mean, he wasn't was, bad at no, all. he was, he was speeding up early. He was going through Ben. Um, and, uh, I mean, the, the guy was playing fearless and just what he's able to do with this first step as well, but his first step, his anticipation and just what he's able to do with his offense is, uh, pretty freaking scary. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what stood out to me seeing him in person is he's built more like, and I told you this, more like our, our, our buddy Rafa, right? Like, you know, a little bit thicker and, and powerful and you can see that, but he has the movement of like, almost like a Christian Alshon, right? With, with the, as far as how he covers the court. So we really haven't seen that in, in pickleball yet. And, you know, watching him in the mix match, yes, he's got some areas that obviously can improve. His backhand dink can improve um, for sure, but he hides that well with his movement. But it just seems like he's already close to the top player in the world, even in doubles, in the off-the-ball role. Right. His poaching, his quickness, his anticipation is really next level. And people keep talking about him as, you know, he was a great tennis player, you know, number seven or eight in the world in singles. But people forget in doubles, he was for a long time thought to be, by a lot of players, the, the best doubles player in the world for a big chunk of his career. So what he's able to do with his quickness up at the kitchen line is, is really next level stuff. And it's great for pickleball. Yeah. And he won his Olympic gold in doubles. Don't know, don't know what uh, year that was, but no, the guy was, um, the guy was, guy was great in doubles. And if there's one thing he does very, very well, he's got a set of hands on him. Uh, and Elite sure. tried to come through him a decent amount there in like game one and game two. And um, yeah, whether it's Jack sliding and like finding a backhand when she kind of aimed towards that dominant pit or him finding a forehand, uh, and just how much power he's got with that 20 millimeter, uh, freaking <laughs> Lux paddle and nothing against Selkirk at all, but just that, that paddles tend to play a, tends to play a little softer. And, um, whether it's him whipping a ground stroke, he's getting more on the serve. He's got some heavy, heavy hands, uh, just comes to show how like explosive and how lively his arm is for him to get that, uh, power with that paddle. <clears throat> for sure. He likes, he likes to chirp a little bit too, right? Tyson, he likes to. Likes to let you know. He, you know, he uh, definitely likes to talk a little bit. Oh, yeah. I, I think I, I think there was some, uh, Riley was telling me there was some chatter with, uh, there was some chatter in their men's match. And Jack said something along the lines of, uh, you should always be beating me in backhand dink battles. Like I just started playing pickleball. And then, um, and I don't, I don't think Rai uh, enjoyed that comment too much. And then at the end of the match, I don't believe there was a paddle tap, uh, in the direction of Riley Newman from, from Mr. Sock, if you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. I like so, it. I like it. You know, yeah, he's, he's kind boys, of funny. Just watch boys are gonna be boys. On court. He's, he's, he's a, you know, he's a showman like you. He definitely plays to the crowd, has a lot of personality, but I think you resist, you know, initiating much of the chirping. You don't really do a whole lot of it, Yeah. but he likes to, he likes to get in there like a Riley. So no, it'll he be does. fun watching his matches going forward, you know, to see how much of that he engages in. It seems like it, it suits his personality. Totally, so uh, totally. stay tuned, folks. Stay tuned. We're going to have some good ones. No, the guy's, the guy's Spicy. great for the sport for sure. Uh, taking a look at Andre and Gabe. Um, Crazy. I mean, obviously the Johns didn't look sharp and Ben... Uh, didn't look sharp at all. Um, and it kind of seemed like that, that, that theme carried over, over the weekend. Obviously he found his best stuff on Sunday as he always does, right. but it, it seemed like speeding high to the backhand. 
<clears throat> you know, and kind of kind of go into that backhand side. Gabe did that a, a decent amount. Also, Gabe flat out just hit some bailout speed ups through Ben, and Ben wasn't <laughs> letting anything go. Um, but um, obviously, Andre is always going to do his thing. He's he's always going to play. Super solid, make a lot of balls. The guy doesn't miss dirt. He's not going to miss dinks. Looks like the hands are are definitely much much heavier. Uh, he just he just switched over to that uh, paddle called Proton, and it seems like uh, there's a there's a lot of players that are picking up that that Proton paddle. Uh, I've got to play with CJ Klinger, and K Mac was there during practice, and CJ's using their new uh, carbon fiber, and uh, CJ's playing great with it. I mean, it seems like it has plenty of feel, plenty of spin, and some added pop. Um, but your no, partner, I, Megan. Yeah, yep. Megan's Megan's playing with one as well. Um, but yeah, no, Andre. I mean, even even Andre against Newman and Wilson, like he was speeding up a decent amount. He's using his levers, and it seems like over the last year or so, the the, the hands have gotten heavier, and he's leaning he's leaning right. in a lot more and just finding offense. But Gabe, I mean, for gosh sakes, Gabe was just going for broke, like banging thirds, fearless, totally cra- fearless. yeah, fearless, crashing in super fast. Every second or third dink, like adding in a big loop on his forehand, showing a dink or showing a speed up and kind of giving it away. And he was beating Ben blatantly head to head time and time again. I felt like you saw, like you mentioned, like kind of the higher backhand or going to that backhand side. Obviously, Ben, dominant, best player in the world. You're going to have to take some risk no matter where you go. But I think that um, with him going to two hands on the counter sometimes, I think that idea of going to kind of the left tip and kind of between zones, what I would call three and four is a, is a great choice, you know, and going into the body, if you surprise him, he'll block a little bit more. And if you can kind of go between that one handed and two handed backhand kind of zone, maybe you'll create just a little bit of indecision right. and maybe he'll be human once in a while, which, uh, which we saw in that match. No, for sure. Who are we going to say, mom? Oh, no, I was just going to say, I think we saw like a little taste of that from Gabe in the like, mix match, uh, in Kansas city. I think when, uh, he played with, uh, 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 Millie, right? Yeah, Millie. Yep, right. and uh, and yeah, yeah, I mean, right. just sheer firepower, just coming at you and closing no, when his he's, eyes. And when just, he's comfortable and fearless, yeah, uh, the guy's I mean, a the guy's a walking highlight reel, insane. and he can bring a ton of offense on on both sides, whether it's off the bounce side of the air. Um, but yeah, it was just funny. Like you could totally see the confidence in Gabe, how he was like willing to just go for broke on a drive from the baseline and then crash in. The guy felt zero pressure, right? <laughs> no, for sure. I mean, he was really aggressive in the off the ball role too. Like yeah. I saw, you know, Andre, you know, he's back hitting thirds. Gabe was just fully disconnecting, using his length. Um, so he's a, you know, he's a, obviously young, but he's a great combination of explosive and, you know, really what is he about six, two, six, three. So that length seems to be a, uh, causing some problems out there for a lot of teams as well. There was a, there was a point in that match. It was like game two. And and this is kind of when I knew that Andre and Gabe were going to pull away from it. Um, so uh, I think Andre hit like a wide dink. Ben hit an ATP. Uh, Gabe defended with a block uh, right in front of Ben. Ben leaned in, hit like a forehand speed up. And Gabe was so far ahead of it. The Gabe hit this backhand punch. His, his his paddle was like fully extended from his body, and the counter went directly down at like eighty miles an hour. Like right then and there, Gabe was thinking like a step ahead. And um, no, I mean, it just seemed like that was that was kind of closing time after that. But Gabe Gabe's got a set of hands on him, man. Like the hands are super heavy, and um, yep. and he's and he's not he's not taking small cuts. Like he's taking massive cuts at those counters. <clears throat> well, those taller guys are tough to get with those flicks. They seem to cover their shoulder well. And his backhand punch, when he slides, he just throws his he shoulder does, he down. He throws that thing, thing down in a hurry, does he you know, not? It looks, it looks scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too funny. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Kath and AL, um, domination on Sunday. It looks like the scores were uh, 11-3, 10 and 10. So, Edda and Megan definitely put up a good fight. Uh, I don't know if you knew this came back, but Megan and Etta actually fought off seven match points against the Brasher twins. I think that was in the quarters. Um, yeah, I was watching that one. I couldn't believe that they came back, but like you mentioned, they've been playing so well to start this year. They're, they're as good as anyone. No, no, for sure. Uh, talk to us about Etta Wright. I mean, how, how clean and pretty is that game of hers? Well, it's kind of crazy. I mean, I remember when she came on the scene, you know, a little over a year ago, she wasn't on the scene long and then made a final in women's. I can't remember who her partner was. So it might've been Megan actually, but um, yeah, it didn't take her. It didn't have much of a learning curve, but she is so smooth 
doesn't ever seem to be in a rush, um, has probably the best one-handed backhand in all the women's game with just her variety with the dinks as well as attacking. She's got great hands on her. And I was talking with Megan about it. Uh, just sounds like they just get along really well. They live in the same area. They're able to train. They work with kind of the same coach in that area. So they just have great team chemistry. And, and Etta is so great on the left side, just seems to do really everything well. Yeah, no, spot on for sure. Um, let's see here. Okay, so Fetty, uh, Fed kind of ran through his his half of the draw. Um, let's see, ended up uh, ended up beating uh, Jame like one and three, and then beat beat Jack like ten and four. Uh, Jack ended up losing in the in the bronze medal match to Connor two and three. So Connor got his revenge. Um, didn't yep. watch that match, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, and then Ben on the other half ended up going to three with Julian, and it's uh, it's kind of funny. You just never know what sort of Julian's gonna gonna show up. Um, obviously, he's always gonna bring energy, um, but just his his ability in singles to hit these really aggressive drops. I mean, him and him and Jame and Ben all kind of play similar to a certain degree. Like it's pretty heavy cat and mouse, and then they look for options from there. Um, but um, you know, even with Julian getting a little older, like like the guy's still moving well. Uh, plenty of firepower and played Ben tight. I think he, I think it was a uh, 11 zero game three, but, um, but definitely pushed him up until game three. Um, ben won in the semis. And then in that finals match, um, that was the first time where I've seen Ben just look really comfortable in singles again. Uh, depth on the return. I know this all too well. Depth on the return. It's tough to freaking pass the guy. The guy's <laughs> super long, super lengthy. It seems like he's like a step ahead anytime he's up and he's and he's defending off the return. And then um, it's just tough to stop the offense. And the offense is in the slowest manner, right? He's going to scrap. He's going to claw. Right. He's going to make his way up. He's not going to miss. And he's going to give you nothing to work with. And that, uh, just his logic in singles is so freaking deflating. And uh looked like he ended up winning eight and four. Um I thought I thought Fed would uh, push him to three, but it just comes to show that uh, Ben has not gone anywhere in singles. Um, and uh, yeah, it just seemed like he got back to his ways with playing softer and more of that cat and mouse uh, style early on. Well, yeah, he's so tough. You know, what, all the matches you've, you've played against him over there, he's so tough to score points against, you know, um, just doesn't give really anything away on the return, especially when it's on Sunday and he's getting good depth. But But yeah, it's crazy when he really gets locked in You'd think that just like the ball strikers, the guys that rip all their thirds, that those would be the guys that would go on those five, six point runs. But Ben's able to do the same thing with that slow death, with dropping a lot of thirds, just gradually kind of getting into these points. And it feels like you're not doing anything wrong because you're making him hit five, six, seven quality shots to win a point. But he's able to do that point after point after point when he's finding his A game. And I'm sure it just feels super demoralizing for anybody that's on the other side of the net. All right, touching on Jack and Julian. Um, Jack Monroe has totally made it. The guy's playing at a super high level. <clears throat> um, looks like he's going to school in Austin and uh, has surrounded himself with a, with a bunch of high level bodies there uh, over the last uh, year, year and a half. Um, yeah, he's added a bunch of bunch of new weapons into his game. He's not missing. Um, actually, the first time that I played Jack, he was like thirteen or fourteen. It was at the Lakes Country Club. I was playing with Chris Mills. And I was trying to push Chris over all day, if you know what I mean, and play a play a larger portion of the court. And we ended up losing to uh, I think Jack was like thirteen or fourteen. We we ended up losing to Jack, and uh, can't remember who Jack. I think Jack played with Morgan Evans actually. Um, so uh, so I'm officially zero and two against uh, against Jack Jack Munro. Yeah, the guy is freaking. So gone. Jack had some pretty high confidence. Yeah, the guy's the guy's got my number, man. <laughs> Um, but, um, I don't think, uh, it was, uh, Deckel and I's finest performance. Um, but those guys took it to us, uh, as K-Mac knows, the, uh, game is only getting faster. I mean, just taking a look at like the first three tournaments this year and, um, I wish we had some stats on this, but just, uh, how much shorter the dinking battles are, how much quicker players are speeding up, like the length of hand battles, uh, how, how many more thirds are being driven? Um, I mean, I would, I would love to see, uh, the miles per hour difference from last year to this year, just with paddle technology, like on the serve on, on the drive, things like that. Um, 
but those guys took it to us and they, and they banged away and they, and they made it fast and kind of put Declan and I in a position where we had a hard time finding rhythm. Um, but, uh, yeah, Jack's, Jack's pretty unique. Um, probably a bit more forehand heavy or a bit more, uh, you know, his, his forehand is probably his strength over the, over the backhand side, but he can do a lot of things. Well, likes to use his little inside out, um, uh, drop when he's on the right. Obviously he's a, he's a lefty. So he mainly plays the right. Um, but he's also got a nice little like knifing hybrid, uh, slice drop from the kitchen line. He can speed up off the bounce with a two. E. he's got plenty of, plenty of pop in the hands, uh, dinks very aggressively. And, um, you know, kind of like a Jack sock, like anytime it felt like Julian was driving Jack's first step and hit and, uh, Jack's ability to poach and anticipate a, a fifth ball, uh, off of our volley. Uh, he was, he was great at it. <clears throat> Came back any, anything that you kind of saw in that match or that, that kind of popped out about Jack? Well, yeah. I mean, first let me kind of talk what you mentioned about how much faster the game's getting. I think as a coach, it was eye opening for me because I think, I think the strategy going in was sound, but you know, I've got to remember, like, make sure that, that my guys are bringing energy early. Right. And you know, that idea of when you're wanting to force your opponents to create through you, I think you still need to remember, like maybe for the first few points, just bring energy, bring energy, punch them in the mouth, take some chances early just to set the tone and then kind of get in the match from there. But you know, one thing about Jack's game that stood out to me was how well he did in hand battles specifically lined up with Deckel. And when Deckel's right on the line, that ball gets on you in a hurry. But he was able to almost like take a step back during a hand battle and then still be able to swing and get enough spin on his on his forehand counter to right. just get some dip on it and then be able to win some of those exchanges. So he did a lot of things well, but, but that specifically stood out to me. Um, let's see here. And then those guys ended up losing in three to, uh, Matt and James. So nice, nice, uh, respectable run by, by them. Um, and then obviously James and Matt ended up, ended up losing in two to, uh, Dylan and J dub. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dylan and, uh, sorry, J dub and Dylan are back on top. Uh, those guys kind of cruised in the finals against Andre and, uh, Gabe as I, as I thought they would. Mama, do you have anything for us? Um, no, I mean, I was going to bring up our family vlog. It's been kind of fun. I don't know if any, everybody's little shout out, uh, if people want to subscribe and check that out, it's been kind of a fun, uh, K-Max been a part of the, the filming there. <laughs> We've got like Peter with us all the time and he's kind of capturing the ins and outs and, uh, not just at the venue and on the court. I mean, I know that everybody gets tons of pickleball content from, uh, recap videos and all the content the tour does such a great job. Um, but yeah, it's a little behind the scenes look at our lives and what we've got going on. And so kind of fun. So if you haven't checked it out, check out making MacGuffins on YouTube, uh, subscribe and turn on the notifications. And we're releasing an episode each week. Uh, typically Tuesday evenings is when we're premiering those. So, so take a look at it. It's, it's been a fun, fun journey so far. So Excited to see where that goes. Making MacGuffins. Yeah, I actually caught the last episode on the plane uh, to Mesa, and I did not realize how much I was being filmed. So, <laughs> gonna have to get way more nervous hanging out with you guys now. Oh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> uh, K Mac, when's the uh, next camp that you are teaching? When and where? Yeah, so gonna be in uh, Minnesota. I believe it's uh, March seventh or close to that. Got my crew with me, with Ethan and Matthew. Those are my my studs all year long. They've, they've each written some pretty dang good articles in the, in the recent newsletter. So we're, we're ready to rip it in some, uh, in some cold weather. Like it. And, uh, if you guys want to follow those guys, follow Matt and Ethan on their socials. Mm -hmm. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, do that by going to my website, TysonMcGuffin.com. Um, and, uh, yeah. in the newsletter that comes out every Thursday, uh, that our camp administrator puts together for us. Shout out to Emily Taylor, who She's does an amazing a lot job. of great things for us. Uh, Ethan and Matt have been putting their two cents or they've been putting some weekly tips in there. So definitely check that out. Um, okay. So injury update. So uh, PPA said I was ill. I was definitely not ill. Um, <laughs> Preface though. We asked them to say <laughs> ill because at that point we didn't know exactly what was going on. And so we didn't want to throw out. I feel like, I don't know, maybe not for everybody, but I feel like when you throw out the word injury or you fill out, you know, th there's a lot to uh, speculate on that kind of stuff. So it was easier just to say unwell for a second until we could get our ducks in a row and then uh, kind of go from there. So now we've had an MRI. 
and we've yeah. had talked us, to a few doctors that. and uh I, about a year ago almost to the week kind of crazy or maybe like three weeks um, same story different year yeah tyson had <laughs> a similar injury or i guess almost the same exact injury basically uh popped his plantar fascia uh, and ankle tendon uh, pretty much all the way last year um, and this year. And it's pretty common. We've found out now through this journey that typically if one leg goes or one foot goes, it's typical that the other one will go <laughs> somewhat Why soon, not, you know, you know, <laughs> just to double kind of even symmetrical. it out. Keep it symmetrical. So with that being said, last year, it ended up actually being a good thing. Uh, tearing your plantar fascia, it, it, you know, in order to, I guess, fix a plantar fascia problem, yeah. they go in and they sever it. That's they cut it. And so that's what they how they do surgery. So basically, last time you did your own surgery, this time you did your own surgery. Uh, the benefit this time is it's not as severe. Uh, and we know the protocol like the back of our hand and already, I mean, it, you're on it, you're moving around. Uh, so with some stringent PT over the next few weeks and lucky so blessed that couldn't have been better timing because you had already, you didn't plan on playing Minnesota, uh, just didn't work scheduling wise. And, um, and we already knew that. And so, yeah, so you got the most amount of time off. Um, so we're able to get it all repaired up. And at the end of the day, just like your other foot now, it's brand new and you actually have more mobility, uh, and you're able to move better laterally. So I think we'll have, we'll gain the same with this one. So yeah. not, not how we wanted it to happen, but if it could have happened, couldn't have happened at a better time. Right. So taking the whole month of March off, um, sit in Minnesota. I'm going to sit Austin as well. Um, and uh, I'll be in a booth for like a week and a half, do a bunch of PT, and then jump back on the horse and and uh, get myself active and ready for, for uh, April. So um, let's see here. Uh, for all the YouTube subscribers out there, we have a pod coming out two to three times a month. Uh, we have some new boiler room breakdowns that'll be coming out, uh, here very, very soon as well. Um, we're going to try to, um, kind of keep it up to date and, um, do some more boiler room stuff that is relevant towards the tournament, like, um, Sunday finals, or if PPA can put together like a little 10 point highlight reel for that tournament, uh, K Mac and I will kind of go through that and give our analysis. Um, and then obviously what my, my, what my wife had mentioned about our other YouTube channel called making MacGuffins coming out with the vlog weekly. Uh, so make sure you guys like, and subscribe. But, uh, other than that, K Mac, any uh, last notes here for our viewers? No, man. I mean, obviously bummed with your injury, but Hey, do what you got to do to earn some well-deserved time off. <laughs> uh, wishing you a speedy recovery, my man. And, uh, happy to get back at it with you after March. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. My name is Tyson McGuffin. This is the McGuffin show. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next episode.